Assalamu alaikum, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Rifat Al-Ajir from the Islamic University. We continue our online courses on uh, Shakespeare. Again, praying that you remain, uh, hoping that you remain at home and praying that you and your family, families and loved ones are safe and, and sound. Today we come to the last scene of Hamlet. Today we come to the heartbreaking moment we wear all expecting, probably looking for, but maybe hoping against hope that Hamlet would somehow miraculously survive, find a way out of this mess, out of this tragedy, because Hamlet is us and we are Hamlet. We identify with him, we feel for him. We grow actually uh, uh, with, uh, with Hamlet. So uh, last time we discussed the first part of, uh, of the scene and today we continue uh, the, the discussion. I want to remind you of things we probably mentioned uh, last time. We've seen Hamlet who's calm at peace. Uh, Hamlet who, uh, he literally said there's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. You know a sparrow, what a sparrow is? A sparrow is a bird and uh, when the bird falls, it falls for a reason. Let it be, this is, this is Hamlet. So Hamlet, uh, we'll see how he starts the, 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 uh, the fencing match, apologizing to, to Laertes. He, he praises uh, uh, Laertes. He compares himself to the Laertes and describes him as a gentleman. Now, according to Hamlet, uh, we'll see how Hamlet blames his, his own madness for the death of Polonius. It wasn't him, it was madness. And probably of what he did in the, in, in the grave. We'll see uh, uh, the first casualty is going to be Gertrude. She's going to drink the poisoned cup that the king prepared for Hamlet. Hamlet kills the king. Laertes asks for Hamlet's forgiveness as he dies. Hamlet forgives him, of course, and prevents Horatio from committing suicide and tells him you should live to tell uh, my story. And we get I don't know why, but we get a report from the uh, ambassador from the UK, from England, that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern uh, are dead. Interesting thing. So not only the four major characters, but also these two uh, guys are dead. Potembras arrives unannounced and he becomes the king of, of Denmark. Now, remember we spoke uh, about New Hamlet. Khalid uh, just now uh, said that the, the play, the, the play ends, the, 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 the opening uh, lines of the first part of the, uh, the last scene uh, are actually prose, true. I don't know why, but again, this is Hamlet who doesn't want to philosophize and poeticize everything. This is Hamlet who's taking things as, as facts now. He, his, his newfound sureness and optimism, his, his strong belief in providence, is significant here. And I'm quoting the source I gave you, uh, the consolidated worldview which accounts for the prince's newfound surety and optimism. Everything is presented in the opening lines. So probably that's one reason why he uses prose rather than uh, poetry. When Hamlet returned to Denmark, he has not only a comprehensive understanding of his role, of what he has to do, what he uh, needs to do, but also a comprehensive a grasp of the whole universe and how it all uh, operates. Again, how he believed in, in, in divinity, in justice, in, in, in providence. Something I described last time as boring. I don't know what you think about that. Now Hamlet uh, learns that the circumstances, there are circumstances that he needs, he must act where he must act rather than deliberate and think and, and ponder. We'll see this is uh, something evidence from lines uh, 30, uh, 83 to 70, where Hamid talks about how, 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 how the king uh, killed my king, my mother, my hopes. He uses, four times he uses the, the word my, the possessive, because this is his own cause. Later on, he's going to talk about his cause rather than uh, something, a duty towards uh, a ghost. Now, by presenting Hamlet as witty and alive, when the exchanges between him and Osric, 
Hamlet comes back again to life. This is the Hamlet we like. This is the Hamlet who makes fun of everybody. This is the rebellious Hamlet. This is the Hamlet that hates the king. This is the Hamlet that hates authority. This is Hamlet that speaks truth to power. This is the Hamlet we, we like. He comes back again, witty and alive. But sadly, Shakespeare here is kind of preparing us for what's uh, to happen next, for the grief, for the, uh, the loss that's going to happen to our engaging uh, hero. Now, so uh, Hamlet, when he apologizes, this is the first extract I'm using from the uh, second part of the, uh, the scene, last scene of Hamlet. Look at how Hamlet is giving excuses to, uh, to Laertes. He says, when he's not himself, he says, uh, was it Hamlet wrong, Laertes? Never Hamlet. And again, look at Hamlet. He's talking about himself in the third person uh, pronoun, the absent pronoun. He's not, you know, there are two Hamlets here, one insane and one sane. And, and this is really not interesting. Usually people criticize Trump for always doing things like this. He talks about how the economy is doing a good job, and then he says, thanks, Trump. Okay, so Hamlet here distances himself from his, uh, the acts that uh, people hated about him, probably killing Polonius. He doesn't mention again, remember, uh, Ophelia, she's not mentioned here. And uh, what happened in the grave is again, not because Hamlet uh, uh, does it, it's because his, uh, his madness. He says, he literally says, then Hamlet does it not. Hamlet denies it. Who does it then? His madness. If it be so, Hamlet is of the faction that is wrong. His madness is poor Hamlet. Doctor, we can't hear you. What was the last thing I said? What's the last thing I said? Was Hamlet's enemy. What's the last His thing madness. I said? Sorry? His um, madness. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Okay, so his, his madness is again, like I said, is poor Hamlet's enemy. He's blaming, he's distancing himself from himself. Hmm. Can, can you mute, please, those making noise? Anyone? Someone is making a lot of noise. Tasneem, can you mute yourself? Okay, so uh, he talks about Laertes as a friend and as, and as a brother, as a gentleman, which is uh, really cool here. It tells us uh, a lot about, about Hamlet. Now, many critics are unhappy because Hamlet gives this excuse. Now, the Hamlet that was mad or that pretended that feigned madness was long gone. Why bring madness again, Hamlet? Why give this excuse of being mad to, to, to Hamlet in, in, in Act 5. Act 5, madness doesn't fit here. It's not appropriate for the discussion, for the development of the character. Why regress? Some wonder whether Hamlet has an, old, an alter ego, a false self. He has another Hamlet. There are two schizophrenia or something. Some, uh, some think, should we think, uh, this is hollow, that, Hamlet, that Shakespeare shouldn't have done this. And consider this Hamlet saying it's his madness to, to be Hamlet's most perplexing utterance. Because again, Hamlet that is mad is gone, no longer here. Why bring him back, Shakespeare? So some still consider Hamlet's madness to be fiction, to be uh, uh, feigned madness, subscribed to for various reasons. Hamlet pretended to be ham uh, 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 crazy, insane, mad. And his mother wanted him to be insane when he killed uh, uh, Polonius because he, she didn't want him to be blamed for, for, for this. So how come we need to take it as something sincere here in the, in, the, in the apology? In the fencing match, Hamlet wins the first two bouts. Clearly Hamlet is 
uh, uh, is better than than Laertes, the the swordsman, which is interesting for some, some for surprising for uh, for others. The scene here creates very dramatic, uh, some kind of dramatic intensity because there are two people fighting. It, it occupies only a few lines in the page, but in many performances it could take up to five minutes, where they keep you know fighting and fighting and fighting. I, I look at the, uh, the productions on YouTube and see how this is going uh, uh, to go because it shouldn't only cover a few lines or five, uh, one minute or two, two minutes because there's a lot that could happen without them having to, uh, to speak. So there is the action here is more significant than uh, the dialogue. Again, it depends on the, perfor the, the producer what uh, uh, to highlight. Now, Laertes accepts the, uh, uh, the, the apology, Hamlet's apology, sincerely, but he tells him, listen, there are terms of honor that I have to make sure people are not going to criticize me for not revenging, avenging the death of, of my, uh, my father. And he talks about, about honor that he has to fight him for this fake uh, uh, duel that he, he planned, where he planned to kill, uh, to kill Hamlet. And this is, again, uh, we spoke about Ham, about Laertes, who cares more about his honor, his name, his reputation, rather than his sister and her, her well-being. Uh, so he accepts the apology, but wants uh, to hear, okay, sorry for the typos, from elder people that, uh, that forgiveness will not tarnish his name, that he's not forgiving Hamlet because he's weak, but because he wants to. He, but of course here he lies, because he says, I will not wrong uh, Hamlet's offered love. And this creates more dramatic irony, engages the audience more uh, into, into, the, into the text. The duel, in the duel, Laertes expresses his remorse, but still he doesn't abort the plan. He literally says, this is against, it is almost against my conscience. I'm doing it, but who pushed you to do this? The king, why? What did he promise you? Why don't you stop? He, uh, when he is injured, so what happens here is that Hamlet wins twice, refuses to drink from the king, will come back. I'm sure, uh, the, the arrangement of the, the, the events, you should see exactly how things are arranged in, in, in the scene. We'll just, I'm arranging this according to issues I want uh, to highlight. So while in a break, Hamlet was distracted, Laertes cuts him, meaning Hamlet is definitely going to, uh, to die. But when they fight again, Hamlet, they exchange swords. Hamlet takes Laertes' sword, stabs him fatally, and then Laertes realizes his, uh, his, uh, his crime, but it's again uh, too late. Here he says, I am justly killed with mine own treachery because he treacherously stabbed Hamlet while distracted. And here he says, he admits that I am justly killed. This is, this is justice. So Hamlet beats him. Only when Hamlet was distracted uh, between the rounds uh, does Laertes uh, cut Hamlet with a poisoned uh, sword. And Laertes' final words are significant. He says, Hamlet, Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. And he says the most significant thing that Hamlet needed in the whole play, thy mother's poisoned. I can no more. The king. The king's to blame. Remember, there are so many people, tens, dozens of people are on stage. People, the witnesses here witnessing this, and Laertes is being the witness. Who is behind this all? Hamlet, the king, the king is to blame. He's behind your death, my, my death, your mother's, uh, your mother's death. And this is significant. We'll see what Hamlet does uh, with that. Interesting how, again, I'm going to be going uh, back and forth. Uh, in, in this scene, Hamlet, the king, remember how he started with loving Hamlet too much when he, Hamlet told him, I am too much in the sun. And then he distanced himself from Hamlet. To keep, he kept telling Gertrude that your son, your son. Now he goes back to being friends with Hamlet. Come Hamlet, come and take this hand from me. Offers him help, supports him, encourages him. And when he talks to him, he talks about Hamlet as our son shall, shall win. Again, he knows. Hamlet is going, if he wins, at least he's going uh, to die either by, po by the poisoned sword or by, by the poisoned uh, uh, drink. Okay, now Gertrude here is also a little bit different. She's developed. She's different from the Gertrude, the submissive Gertrude, 
we've seen earlier. She is for the first time showing Hamlet motherly affection and love and care and support that we don't we didn't see uh, before. Uh, in the middle of the scene, she sends, which is really cool of her, very thoughtful, a messenger to Hamlet, telling him to offer loyalties and apologies. She said, the, the 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 Lord said, the Queen desires you to use some good, some gentle entertainment to loyalties before the fall uh, to play, and this is really cool of a mom, how she's giving advice, good sound advice to her son. And this is in many ways, unprecedented love, unprecedented maternal affection from Gertrude to her uh, son. She also takes care of him, of his locks. She gives him a napkin to rub his uh, brows. She also literally uh, uh, wipes the, uh, the, the, the sweat off his uh, face. And the queen, I will talk about uh, he, uh, that what happens to her here. I want you to look at this. I'll give you uh, one minute to tell me what you think of this, Gertrude. So this is when the, when the queen drinks before she dies. She says, so I want two people to read. Can you read, please? Yep. Yes, sure. Go on, one yes. more. True, do not. Go on. I will, my lord. I pray you, pardon me. It is the poison cup. It is too late. I do not, I dare not drink yet, madam. By and by. Come, let me wipe thy face. So Gertrude is offering Hamlet to drink, but Hamlet says no. And then she wants to drink herself. What does the king tell her? Uh huh. Yeah, do not drink. Don't do not drink. Get he doesn't want to drink. Yeah. Do not drink. Giving him. Remember the the many orders he gave her earlier, huh? And she was always obedient. She was always submissive. She was always meek. But here, for the first time, what does the queen say? I will, my lord. Yeah. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to be following your commands any longer. I pray you, pardon me, Malish Asfa, sorry. And then the king, the king aside, takes an aside and says, it's the poison cup, it's too late. And Hamlet refuses to drink. And then the queen says, come, I love this. Yes, she's a mother, but it's really beautiful. Let me wipe thy, thy face. Now, in this interesting uh, change, development of character, the last uh, uh, thing she does here was again, wipe Hamlet's face. Why, you know how moms always take care of their children, no matter how old they are, they just keep uh, taking care of them. Uh, and she has always listened to their ma the male guardians. You know, in a patriarchal society, the first husband, the second husband, and Hamlet, everybody was giving her orders. And now, the moment she refuses to listen, she dies. <laughs> what, what is that? What is that about? When women don't listen to men, they die? Is it like an anti-feminist idea? Or it should be. We'll like talk about this in the discussion. Like, they remember uh, this, uh, there is anti-feminism in the whole society. So I'll give you time to comment in, in the second part. Again. Now, like, like what happened with Ophelia. Exactly. Uh, There's a pattern. Here, the first action she takes, she dies. Okay. Yeah. The same thing here. When she is independent of men, she dies. We'll talk about that. Gertrude drinks in defiance of her husband's uh, commands. The last thing she, she uttered, and now when, she, uh, when Hamlet is injured, Laertes is injured, she says, no, no, the drink, the drink. Oh, my dear Hamlet, giving warning again to her son. And the drink, the drink, I am poisoned. And, and she dies. Now, two interesting things. She warns her, hus uh, sorry, her, uh, her son Hamlet, like, don't drink, because she first, she tried to offer him the drink. She drank instead. She died for him. And she's saying, I am poisoned. How did she know? 
I know this could be stupid, but how did she know? How did she guess that there was poison in, uh, in, in the cup? We'll talk about this probably in a bit. That, um, like I'm saying that, could it be that the king himself uh, is known for poisoning people and others? Uh, see, see my point? The point is that she immediately realized that she, she's poisoned because the king tries to cover up. She says, oh, because she saw that the, the, the blood, she's too weak, too, she fainted. She's fainting because she saw the blood, Hamlet's blood, that is blood. But she says, I am, I am dead, I'm poisoned. The drink is poisoned. Beware Hamlet, in other words. And then when Laertes is injured fatally, he admits, we'll see this in a bit, and the king is killed at last. And Hamlet says, O oh, villainy, who let the door be locked, treachery, seek it out. The question is why now? Why does Hamlet uh, kill the king uh, now? Okay, uh, I'm not sure how much time we have before we are uh, disconnected by, by Zoom, but I want you to, to think about this a little bit. Why did Hamlet kill the king just now? What difference does it make? What has happened now? Uh, we've got different circumstances here. Like what? His mother died, like, his mother died in front of his eyes. Like, okay, so the, the difference the, is that? The reaction is different. It, it's because his mom, does he like her more than he likes her dad? No, or, no, 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 it's not his mom. I, I think if his father like, was killed in front of his eyes, he would I've done the same thing because of the circumstances. It's an, uh, a direct reaction from Hamlet. What, what other circumstances do we have? Someone else. What other circumstances do we have that change that made the, uh, Hamlet kill the king now? Uh, maybe because his mom like turned out to be like uh, nice to him at the end, so he like wanted to kill the king, you know, as an act of revenge. As okay. Khaled said, you know, it's like an immediate reaction. He just, like yes. she was treating him nicely and then she suddenly like dies. Possible. What else? Maybe he yeah, killed him. Banan is saying, because Banan is saying, because Hamlet was sent to be killed in England and now it's his time to take revenge for himself. Interesting also. Kasnim is saying, maybe he wanted this to be as an apology to his mother for his bad treatment, possible. But remember, she's now dead. So he's just dedicating this to her soul, if possible. Someone else? I think that uh, it, it is related to the change of his character. He's becoming but more confident. Other circumstances, becoming... Hamlet himself is different, Is changed. Thank you. Yeah. This is one thing. Another thing is that the situation is different because when when the king killed uh, Hamlet's father, no, Hamlet no, no. the king, focus, focus nobody saw. Focus, focus on this scene. What's different? In yeah, this in this scene, yeah, the difference is that everybody, so Laertes saying that the king is to blame, um, okay. the queen this? saying that uh, the, the drink was poisoned, so everybody knows that he's a murderer. So what, what does Hamlet have now? One, witnesses. His, yeah, witnesses, yeah. Who? Evidence. Yeah, no doubt, Laertes, no ghost. Laertes and, and the people are witnessing this. Now, and, and Ram is saying he, he changed also. He's now a man of action. He has evidence, Bashar wrote. So the most interesting thing here is that we have something that is, is, is different. So by saying now his father and his mother were killed by the same person in the same way by poison. He saw death here when, yeah, he saw the act of killing his, uh, his family. These are different circumstances, but later on we'll talk about uh, more uh, issues re related to, to this. But look at still, this is killing a king. It's not an easy thing to do. Hamlet says, let the door be locked, 
close the doors so the evil of killing a king doesn't spread all over Denmark like we've seen in, 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 in Macbeth, for example, or what we've seen in Hamlet itself, how the whole world was turned upside, because, upside down because somebody killed, killed the king. Killing the king is not an easy thing uh, to do. Okay. More, anybody? Uh, yes, I would like quickly, to please. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so he was like supposed to drink from the cup. So he like saw uh, a direct like evidence that the king was trying to kill him actually because it was Hamlet that was supposed to drink from the cup. Interesting. So he like saw a direct um, uh, like attempt from the king to kill him. That's really interesting. So Hamlet has witnesses. He has ev concrete evidence. He's a science. He's a remember. He's a university student. He wanted this. A ghost from beyond the grave is not enough for Hamlet to give him uh, orders here. So Laertes says, uh, never to rise again, thy mother's poison, the king, the king is to blame. Not only does Hamlet stab the king, 